Me. Have you ever heard of a monster that is literally capable of scaring the shit out of other monsters? Well, we're talking about the Slayer of the Undead. Someone who makes even monsters lose sleep. Say hello to Blade. A creation of writer Marvin Arthur Wolfman and the late penciler Gene Cullen. Come to think of it, it's been 50 long years since this fictional character first made his debut in the world of comics. For those who don't know, Blade initially appeared as a supporting character in the 10th issue of the horror comic book series The Tomb of Dracula back in 1973. And of course, it didn't take Blade much time to garner a huge fan following. In fact, the character became so popular that he started starring in his own storylines not long after. This brings us to the main content of today's video, where we'll explore the entire life of Blade, or in other words, Marvel's most favourite and feared vampire hunter. This video will be an interesting in-depth analysis of the character, so we suggest that you stay tuned until the end of the video. Are you ready? Let's get to know Blade, shall we? Now just before we go into our video, we have a small request. If you enjoy our content, then please support us by subscribing to the channel. It's a small click for you, but for us it means an awful lot. Thank you, now let's begin. Who is Blade? Where does he come from? You think you know about Blade, but ask yourself this. How much do you really know about this vampire slayer? Born as Eric Cross Brooks, Blade was born in London in a brothel to Tara Vanessa Cross Brooks. Blade's father, Lucas Cross, who happened to be a member of the secret society known as the Order of Tirana, sent his expecting wife to England for safety before he was falsely imprisoned in Latveria. Tara took the identity of Vanessa Brooks and sought sanctuary with brothel owner Madame Vanity, who also happened to be another member of the Order. With with Tara undergoing severe labour complications, she was coerced to seek the aid of a doctor. However, the doctor turned out to be the voracious vampire Deacon Frost, who ended up feasting on Tara and drained her blood while she gave birth. It was primarily during this that Frost inadvertently passed along his vampire abilities and, in this case, certain vampire enzymes to the baby, which left Eric tainted and at the same time prevented him from fully transforming into a vampire. Now, when we say tainted, the enzymes had Eric's bloodstream altered, thereby making him part human and part vampire vampire and rendering him immune to vampire bites. With Tara dead, Eric was left orphaned at a very young age and he was raised in the brothel. While growing up on the streets of London, Eric once crossed paths with an older man who he saw being attacked by a trio of vampires. Eric aided this man who turned out to be the veteran vampire hunter Jamal Afari and helped him kill the vampires with the latter's silver-headed walking cane. Afari decided to take Eric under his guidance and become his mentor and a foster father figure. Afari, who was also a trumpet player himself, moved into the brothel with Eric to give him music lessons and teach him how to control his powers. Athari trained Eric in everything from hunting, fighting and to killing vampires. For those of you wondering, yes it was Athari who gave Eric the menacing moniker of Blade given the latter's prowess with sharp weapons, especially knives and daggers. Marvelous story arcs of Blade going after Dracula. Blade's driving desire to claim vengeance on the blood-sucking undead led him to stalk many nights on his own. Blade pursued Dracula throughout Europe and led to the Far East, and while he did manage to stake Dracula several times, somehow he never really managed to eradicate the Lord of the Vampires. In China, Blade became part of a small group of like-minded vampire hunters consisting of Azu, Lucenda, Orji and Ogun, and the plan was to hunt down Dracula. Blade decided to opt for a different approach and after finding his way to Dracula, he told the vampire lord he was part of a group that favoured vampires and their ruling of the world. Further adding that humans stood no chance against the supreme vampires, Blade offered his crew's assistance to Dracula so as to let them do his bidding as lackeys during the daytime. With Blade luring Dracula to the extent that his group also had a plan that would expedite global conquests by vampires, an intrigued Dracula made up his mind to meet Blade's circle. Of course, it didn't take much time for the vampire lord to see through things especially how the whole thing was a setup and that Blade's group was anything but vampire promoters. While the group was successful in staking Dracula, Dracula survived yet again and decided to teach Blade an important lesson by killing all of the vampire hunters, except for Masenda. While Masenda retired from vampire hunting, Blade, devoured by his agony for his fallen comrades, decided he would continue his quest alone. The shenanigans with Dracula continue. Whenever Blade needed money, he would perform at a London nightclub as a trumpeter. During his occasional musical stints, he would notice a beautiful woman who would never miss out any of his performances. One particular night, Blade, upon witnessing the woman named Saffron be pestered by a pimp, ended up intervening in the situation, post which he became romantically involved with her. As a vampire hunter, Blade would time and again fight alongside a team led by Quincy Harker, who he'd first encountered while locating Dracula in Paris. Quincy 
Quincy was the son of the well-known Jonathan Harker and the team comprised fellow vampire hunters Rachel Van Helsing, Taj Natal and Frank Drake. Blade and the new team were seen chasing and fighting Dracula all over Europe, eventually reaching the tomb of Dracula. It's fair to state that the group was successful in outnumbering the Lord of the Vampires and Blade was able to drive a stake right through the heart of Dracula, but it's Dracula we're talking about. He doesn't remain dead for long and the Vampire Lord was eventually revived by his thralls. There came a time when Blade tried to kill Dracula once again only to have the latter subdue him and feed on him, leaving him for dead. When Quincy chanced upon Blade later, he found his body. Believing Blade to be dead, Quincy geared up himself to drive a stake through Blade's heart, but before he could do so, Blade revived, much to the surprise of Quincy. Quincy was appalled to find that Blade had not transformed into a vampire despite being bitten. That's when Blade elucidated to Quincy that he was resistant to the vampire's curse as his mother was bitten by one once at the time of his birth. Quincy and Blade were later seen traveling back to London where Quincy attempted to persuade Blade to stay and carry on with their conquest to exterminate Dracula. However, Blade declined and parted ways with Quincy. When he came back to the flat that he shared with Saffron, he discovered that a vampire had broken in and was just about to feed on his girlfriend. It goes without saying that Blade was effortlessly able to overpower this vampire. After this, Blade found himself battling Dracula once again with the duo battling all across the city. Blade was able to forcibly make Dracula retreat when he effectively managed to impale Dracula partially in the chest using a broken ski pole followed by a wooden dagger. Blade's hunt for his mother's killer eventually led him to travel to Boston where he encountered Deacon Frost and with him attacking Frost he was prevented from doing so further by Dracula who demanded that Blade come with him to meet Quincy Harker. Dracula also explained that he had no role to play in the murders that the Coven was accountable for by acting on their own. Blade was left with little to no choice but to ally with Dracula against the latter's battle with Dr. Sun. Post this particular battle, Blade threatened to kill Dracula if he didn't help him in finding his mother's killer but Dracula had no intention of being bossed around and while it did lead to a battle between the duo, Dracula disappeared, leaving Blade to set out on his own once again. Blade's encounter with Hannibal King. While Blade was seeking Deacon Frost, he crossed paths with Hannibal King, a private detective that Frost had turned into a vampire. Initially distrustful of King, Blade fought him, and while he was easily able to defeat him, he decided to work with King at the end of the day, due to the duo having a mutual goal. As part of the duo's first team up, Blade and King fought against Blade's evil duplicate, who was created with the sole purpose of destroying the original Blade. While fighting, Blade stopped when he started getting merged with his evil doppelganger upon contact. King couldn't stop this merger from completing and thereafter he reached out to Damon Hellstrom, the son of Satan, who eventually performed an exorcism on the doppelganger and killed him while exorcising Blade from this duplicate. Blade and King ultimately caught up with Frost and killed the vampire and his army of vampiric doppelgangers, thereby forming a lasting friendship. From Borderline Investigations Inc. to Night Stalkers. Blade and his friends King and Frank Drake teamed up with the sorcerer Doctor Strange and together they ended up forming an investigative agency known as Borderline Investigations Inc. to battle against the supernatural threats. The agency disbanded when Drake left and Blade was admitted to psychiatric hospital after a battle with temporarily revived Dracula. It was Doctor Strange who later reassembled the team renaming it the Night Stalkers. There was a time when the demon Lilith hired the Night Stalkers to finish both Ghost Rider and Johnny Blaze. It was only after a long drawn out battle did the Night Stalkers realise that they had been tricked. This led them to join forces with Ghost Rider and Blaze against Lilith and her Lilin. The Night Stalkers were also renowned for battling other threats such as the subversive organisation Hydra's Department of Occult Armaments DOA. Blade's final battle as part of the Night Stalkers was against Varney who is often addressed as the very first Lord of Vampires. Varney had altered Taj Natal, a former vampire hunter ally of Blade, into a vampire and while it broke his heart to see his friend and transformed into a bloodsucker, Blade did not hesitate when it came down to stalking Taj with a dagger. The climactic battle also led to the seeming death of King and Drake, after which Blade disbanded the team and decided to carry on with his quest all by himself. Blade as the Daywalker After the disbandment of the Night Stalkers, Blade was a solo vampire hunter once again, who moved to Greenwich Village. Mind you, it was around this time, or perhaps sometimes before that, Blade also had a daughter with Saffron, who was named Brielle. Blade was later reportedly to have briefly teamed up with John Clark, one of the last of the Order of Warrior Scholars who had pledged to fight against the evil forces of the supernatural. This duo not only encountered a vampire impersonating Deacon Frost, but also a resurrected Dracula once again. Afterwards, with Blade discovering that King had survived both, both teams teamed up to wipe out a genuinely restored Frost. For a while, Blade also remained.
For a while, Blade also remained active in New Orleans, during which he not only defeated the vampire Ulysses Sojourner, but also his former ally, the living vampire Morbius, who was under the thrall of Sojourner. Blade went after Morbius after their first battle in New York City, and there he joined forces with Spider-Man. However, Blade was bitten by Morbius in the process, which in turn transformed him into a daywalker, or in other words, a vampire capable of walking in the sunlight and devoid of every other traditional weakness that vampires have in general. But there is no denying that Blade was driven by exceeding levels of bloodthirst, however he was also somehow able to restrain himself, having resorted to a particular serum. Project Silver Eye. It's around the same time the Blade had a run-in with the espionage agency S.H.I.E.L.D., who had plans of using his blood for their special Project Silver Eye, in the hopes of creating vampire operatives. Of course, Blade, with the help of the vampire slayer Masha and Mikado, was able to prevent S.H.I.E.L.D. from doing so and shut down the project. After this, Blade joined forces with several vampire hunters worldwide to stop Dracula from becoming a godlike vampire lord. The real reason behind the resurrection of Dracula. While Blade did re-encounter Dracula and appeared to have destroyed him aboard the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier Pericles V, what he wasn't aware of was the fact that his father, Lucas Cross, was the one primarily accountable for the most recent resurrection of Dracula. In due course, Lucas found his way to his son, kidnapped him and went to the whole extent of trying to force feed Blade a virgin girl by having him starved. All of this was done in order to fulfill a prophecy that Blade had inadvertently begun years before. And while Blade did manage to escape from there, after biting his own hand, he ended up feeding on the virgin blood of the highly powerful and evil vampire priest, Draconis, oblivious that by doing so he had actually fulfilled said prophecy. Blade eventually tracked down his father and demanded answers from him. That's when he learned that Lucas was actually a vampire and that everything he had been doing all this while was in accordance to the same prophecy. This had Blade starting to work on stopping the prophecy and tracking down the body of Dracula, and it was around that same time he discovered that his old mentor Jamal Afari, whom he was forced to kill, was still alive. After after weeks of searching for Jamal and not being able to locate him, Lucas reached out to Blade and offered to help him out. Blade and King went all the way to Transylvania with Lucas after his father guaranteed him that they would find Jamal inside Dracula's castle. The plan is to complete a prophecy that Lucas believes will give every vampire their very souls back. Of course, Blade has no intentions of making vampires invulnerable, and with him refusing to cooperate, the ensuing scuffle had him kill King, who by then had turned against him in a desperate attempt to have his soul returned back to him. With Dracula confronting Blade afterwards, it becomes crystal clear that Lucas was responsible once again for having him resurrected and also having made a deal with him. What followed was yet another scuffle, one that led every vampire back to life, including a resurrected Hannibal King. Blade eventually decided not to kill Lucas and left him to live with his actions. As for King and Blade, they parted ways but not before Blade handed King the elixir that Doctor Doom had given him earlier as a gift to cure his vampire of thirst for human blood. What follows next? Blade was next seen leading a secret black ops team of superheroes known as the Vanguard, which was known for executing missions that included assassination in foreign lands. It's mainly during this particular stint with the Vanguard that Blade acquired a cybernetic hand replacement. It's fitting to say that the group eventually disbanded after their secret identity was compromised and this drove Blade to join their super spy agency MI-13 to aid in their fight against the supernatural evil. Blade had difficulty fitting in especially after he tried to kill team member Spitfire who was a essentially part vampire. But then the two of them sorted out their differences and even became romantically involved with one another. During Blade's time with Military Intelligence Section 13, he was part of a lot of things. Blade battled Legion, he was mind controlled by Nightmare and he was forced to battle Doctor Voodoo. And if all these weren't enough, he also of course crossed paths with Dracula. In the Curse of the Mutants storyline, Blade discovered that the throne of Dracula had been taken over by his son, Zarus. As a result, Blade led an army of vampire hunters to Zarus's base of operations in the hope of blowing up the whole place during the day so that the vampires would all turn to dust. But to Blade's utter shock, he saw the vampires walk out of the base unharmed into broad daylight. Upon learning that Zarus would launch his next attack on Utopia, which happened to be the home of the X-Men, he left to warn them and lend a hand. It goes without saying that Blade proved himself to be a worthy fighter in this cause, and he was shocked when Cyclops resurrected Dracula. While it's true that resurrecting Dracula worked in the favour of the X-Men, things clearly didn't sit well with Blade, and he ended up attacking Dracula. However, before Blade could cause him harm, he was knocked unconscious thanks to Cyclops charging him with an optic blast. Later, with Blade attempting to have Wolverine stake Jubilee, who was then turned into a vampire in the skirmish, Wolverine warned him not to do it. This had Blade angrily leaving from there while telling the X-Men that they will all have to kill her eventually to put her out of her misery. As seen in the Infinity storyline, Blade was disclosed in the end to have been the character who laid his hands on the faux Spider-Man suit from the superhero costume shop. Yes, we are specifically talking about Spider-Hero, who became an integral part of the Mighty Avengers in the Inhumanity storyline.
storyline, Blade was seen adopting Hawkeye's former identity of Ronan, but his real identity was exposed in due course, post getting captured by the Deathwalkers that he was hiding his very identity from. Blade defeated the Deathwalkers alongside the other Avengers, after which he left the team. In the Secret Empire storyline, Blade was held captive in Manhattan after the Burrow was isolated from the rest of the world by a Dark Force dome. Blade ended up protecting humans by slaughtering every attacking vampire that attempted to harm the humans. Later on, Blade was taken as a prisoner by an army of vampires only to be freed by Wasp. That is when he took up the offer of the Black Panther and joined forces with the Avengers. T together they faced a civil war brewing amidst the vampire community, which was stage managed by the Shadow Colonel and the Legion of the Unliving. Sometime later, Blade was duped by an old acquaintance into safeguarding a young woman who was being targeted by a masked Cambodian assassin with a special weapon. It was only after Blade had killed this assassin that he realised the young woman's true identity as a Dana, or in simpler words, an ancient eldritch god who could only be stopped by the assassin. Blade attempted to defeat her, but he stood powerless against the god. In fact, when he tried to regain his consciousness 13 days later, he found himself imprisoned in the Cardamom Mountains and tortured by a belligerent group of warrior occultists. Blade soon realised what he was undergoing was actually a form of punishment for having killed the assassin and bringing doom to the entire world at the hands of Adana. Luckily, Rotha, who happened to be a teenage member of the militant sect, found Blade useful enough and freed him from captivity so as to have him stop Adana from annihilating the world. In order to slay an eldritch like Adana, Blade needed to lay his hands on a special weapon similar to what the assassin possessed. While Blade did manage to steal the Sword of Lucifer, or in other words, the Lightbringer, he eventually realised he had been duped once again. The Lightbringer turned out to be a key to unlocking Adana's powers instead. Overcome with guilt and a lust for revenge, Blade chose to fight the Adana yet again only to get to defeated once more. Upon realising he would never be able to gain advantage over someone so powerful as the ancient Adana, Blade left with no other choice turned to his oldest enemy Dracula to seek mentorship from him and thereby get the edge against the mother of evil. Mind-blowing story of Blade in films. If you call yourself a fan of the Blade movies, you're bound to remember celebrated actor Wesley Snipes in the titular role. The incredibly successful trilogy of the Blade movies began in the year 1998, with Stephen Norrington directing the first film and David S. Goyer writing the screenplay. The film adaptation stays true to the comics with a few certain changes here and there to make things more exciting. The character of Blade is shown to be a dampier possessing all the supernatural powers and re reflexes of a vampire and a thirst for blood which is controlled through a special serum. As a nod to his comic origins, Blade's mother gets bitten by Deacon Frost while she was pregnant and Blade grows up to be a protector of the mortal race, resenting vampires and getting rid of the bloodsuckers that infest Earth. The film was so successful that it spawned two sequels. Blade 2 was directed by Guillermo del Toro and written by Goyer. Serving as a direct sequel to the first film, the movie follows Blade as the Vampire Slayer in his continuing effort to safeguard the humans from the vampire. This is where Blade finds himself caught up in the midst of an intense battle against a group of mutant vampires addressing themselves as Reapers, who are trying to commit global genocide of the vampire race as well as humankind. Left with few options, Blade is forced to form an alliance with the special elite group of vampires known as the Blood Pack to take down these Reapers. Blade Trinity, which was both directed and written by Goyer, served as the final instalment in the Blade trilogy. While the plotline has a battle between humans and vampires continuing, Blade Blade is now a wanted man. Framed for several murders that were actually committed by the vampire leader, Danica Talos, Blade joins forces with a team of rogue vampire slayers, or in other words, the Night Stalkers, and faces the first vampire, the most challenging adversary, Dracula. New Blade movie dropping in 2025. Everyone knows about the New Blade movie starring Marshala Ali that's coming to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and while fans are extremely excited about it, we decided to fill you in with the information that we have at our disposal. Directed by Jan Demange, the new film will be a complete revamp of the franchise, one that will sadly not have the beloved Wesley Snipes. This MCU reboot was initially scheduled for a 2023 release but it was pushed back to 2024 and then finally 2025 as the final movie of Phase 5. We have a new release date which happens to be the 7th of November in 2025. Besides Ali, the movie is also reported to cast actors Mia Goth, Delroy Lindo and Aaron Pierre in roles that are yet to be disclosed. But if you ask us, we think Lindo is suitable enough to portray the character of Jamal Afari, keeping our fingers crossed for this one. With the plotline of this R-rated reboot yet to be revealed, what's given is that the narrative will have Blade's origin on display, how he became a vampire hunter and following the character as an established vampire slayer. The movie, in a way, will also answer where Blade has 
been throughout the MCU's history, further implying that the character may have a significant role in the next Avengers team-up. Let's talk about his powers and abilities. The solitary fact that his mother was bitten by a vampire when she was pregnant with him has Blade exhibiting an array of unique abilities. For starters, he's immune to a vampire's venom and simply cannot be turned into a vampire. He has all of their abilities and none of their weaknesses except for the thirst for blood. This is usually taken care of because Blade, rather than consuming blood, injects a specifically designed serum that provides the same nourishment at the end of the day. This day-walking half-vampire badass has a heightened awareness of the supernatural, possessing superhuman strength, endurance, speed, agility and a particularly sharp night vision. Despite not being immortal, he seemed to age way slower than a human, having a prolonged lifespan. Credits to his vampire-like physiology that makes him resistant to the otherwise hypnotic gaze of the vampires. And now comes the best part. Blade is entirely impervious to sunlight. He also possesses a healing factor, and that in many ways is similar to that of Wolverine. Blade can recover from the nastiest of injuries at an incredible speed, while the full extent of Blade's regeneration of powers are not yet known, he is shown to regenerate missing or damaged limbs and tissues after being bitten by Morbius. Blade also has this rare ability to sense danger, which has aided him several times when it comes to identifying demons in disguise. Blade is also highly trained in espionage and martial arts. Add to this an expert swordsman and the fact that he is multilingual. Blade in Marvel Animated Universe The character's first big on-screen appearance was not until 1994 Spider-Man The Animated Series. Introduced in the episode titled Blade the Vampire Hunter and voiced by J.D. Hall, Blade's storyline was slightly changed. His father happened to be the vampire Deacon Frost and his mother Miriam was a human. After Miriam was turned into a vampire, she gave Blade up for adoption. While the series has Blade on the trail of the living vampire Morbius, it also showed Blade and Spider-Man becoming reluctant allies. Also, how can we disregard the fact that the series also introduced Blade's mentor Abraham Whistler? Truth be told, it's only fair to address Whistler as one of the best addition to Blade's mythos ever since his creation. Imagine Blade riding a bike and using a laser sword, well that's Blade in Spider-Man the Animated Series. This is their revenge! Marvel Anime Blade. Produced as part of a collaboration between Marvel Entertainment, Madhouse and Sony Pictures Entertainment Japan, Marvel Anime was a series of four anime superhero TV series and two directed video films. The four 12 episode series that were based on Blade, Iron Man, Wolverine and X-Men aired on Animax from 2010 to 2011, featuring Japan as the primary setting for the storyline. Blade was the fourth and final show of the series and written by Kenta Fukasuki. The storyline had Blade, a daywalker vampire born with both human and vampire blood in his veins after a vampire ended up attacking his mother. Blade visits Japan on some kind of mission and it's there he chances upon Deacon Frost, the vampire responsible for the death of his mother. The series also had Blade going up against a mysterious organization of vampires, Existence. In addition to the mentioned abilities that Blade possesses, the character's swordsmanship in particular is shown to be quite advanced in this particular series. His sword style chiefly revolves around his mastery over the Kenjutsu art, Yagu Shinkaje Ryu, one that is capable of regenerating exceedingly powerful shockwaves and add to this transparent wind blades from his sword swings. Naturally, this lets him blast or slice his enemies even from a distance. Wicked, right? We thought so as well. Blade is voiced by Akio Otsuku in the Japanese version and Harold Perrineau in the English dub. Marvelous appearances of Blade in other media. We won't be discussing the ones we've mentioned before, but we'll begin with television. So we'll talk about films and then head over to video games after. Played by Sticky Fingers, Blade has appeared in the self-titled television series known as Blade the Series, created by David S. Goyer. The plotline is set after the events of the third installment in the Blade trilogy. The character's birth name is Eric Brooks, born in Detroit, and his father is Robert Brooks, raised by him until he was 12. That's when his vampiric nature started to become more apparent. Voiced by by Terry Crews, Blade has appeared in the Ultimate Spider-Man two-part episode called Blade and the Howling Commandos. This version was seen having tattoos of ancient runes on his scalp and was also an ex-member of Fury's Howling Commandos, who had left the team for reasons not specified. Voiced again by the talented Terry Crews, Blade has appeared in the Paul Dini, Henry Gilroy and Marvel Animation's Hulk and the Agents of Smash, where he's a member of Fury's Howling Commandos. Blade has also made appearances in the superhero anime TV series Marvel Disc Wars The Avengers, where he's 
voiced by Hiroki Yasumoto in the Japanese version and Bo Billingsley in the English dub. Speaking of the films, we know we've mentioned the Blade trilogy, but did you know that Marshal Ali made an uncredited voice cameo as Blade in a post-credit scene for the 2021 superhero flick Eternals? Guess it's surely time for a rewatch, right? Moving on to video games, Blade has appeared in the action game also titled Blade based on the 1998 movie voiced by Red Pepper. And that's not all, there was a Blade 2 film tie-in too where he appeared and was voiced by Tom Clark Hill. The character also appeared in several Marvel crossover games, to name a few there's the 2006 action role-playing video game Marvel Ultimate Alliance, the 2007 action adventure beat-em-up platform game Spider-Man Friend or Foe, the 2010 pinball video game developed by Zen Studios Marvel Pinball, crossover fighting video game Marvel vs. Capcom 3 Fate of the Two Worlds and Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Lego themed action adventure video games Lego Marvel Super Hero 2, mobile collectible card game Marvel Duel and to add to this tactical role playing game Marvel's Midnight Suns where he's voiced by Michael J. White and his character happens to be a member of the Midnight Suns. We've also heard the standalone game starring Blade and titled Marvel's Blade is currently being developed by Arcane Lion and is to be published by Bethesda Softworks. Marvellous verdict. And that is all for today folks, and we finally come to the end of our video with that. There's no denying that Blade has become a household name for comic book fans over the years, but what do you think of the wielder of the ebony blade? We'd love to know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Also, how excited are you about the upcoming Blade reboot? We want to know everything so do hit us up in the comments. Now if you enjoyed this video you know what to do, please do leave a thumbs up and stay tuned with us as we promise to come back with more exciting content. Till then goodbye and thanks for watching, have a good one and be safe.